<sighs> okay, maybe just a comment or two about practice and then we'll take the questions and uh, reminder we're live streaming. All right, we just finished up uh, on Tuesday practice, a little bit ahead of schedule, and uh, hoping to stay ahead a little bit this week with the off week, getting a jump start with these guys. Um, had good energy today, good enthusiasm. We went about half in, half out. <coughs> it was hot outside, and uh, we're playing at night, so we're trying to get a little bit of practice in the in the climate, but a little bit in as well. I thought the kids were really uh, energized today and uh, really pushed hard. And, get a chance to do a lot of good on good because of the similarities in the offenses and defense. So uh, the players like going against each other uh, a little better. That's an advantage, you know, you just mentioned it. It's an advantage that they in, in get the chance to enjoy as well. But it's not something you really get to do all that often, kind of practice against yourself a little bit. How, is that a little bit of an advantage you, you feel like for you to a little bit of a comfort level? It's really, I mean, they get the same thing. Right. It's a little bit, I told the players, I mean, it's not like, our offense is not exactly like theirs, and our defense is not exactly like theirs, but there are similarities. So with that, you get some overlap. You're able to run some plays that both teams run, and uh, we practice against each other every week anyway. So we see a lot of the same plays most of the time, but it does allow for uh, you to go a little more what I call good on good and give the guys more competitive reps. But they're at the same, same situation. Coach, four games into the season, though. What do you know about your team that you didn't know at the start of the year? Uh, that they're resilient, that uh, they respond to. Our, our, not, our, our days that haven't been great at practice, they've responded well to. And that's usually the first sign that they're the right kind of guys. And then adversity strikes, and, and they respond to that. I mean, you know, we're not easy on them out there. We're, we're tough on them, and they embrace it. And the older guys kind of lead with a message of, you know, they're pushing you because they want you to be great. And that's usually the sign of a good team that can handle, number one, adversity, but number two, uh, tough coaching. Well, I want to see them grow. I want to see us continue to improve. I mean, there's a lot of teams that will hit game five, six, seven, and they plateau. And the teams that are best continue to get better. And I don't, I mean, I don't know what this team's going to do game five, six, seven. We got, we got to see. But I want to see them continue to grow and improve. Heather, evaluation, I have a question. Um, so on the defensive side of the ball, what's type of things have you seen since Notre Dame looking at that and going through the bye week? Um, but, but what areas do you think they've improved on? And what, what, where are you hoping to see some more improvement? Well, you're always trying to get better on defense. We're trying to create uh, ways to make negative plays, have new wrinkles, um, uh, allow the guys to play fast, play more players. Um, we're trying to improve, improve on our tackling. You know, it's not something that we've been satisfied with. We, we get out of position and reach a lot of times, and we're not forcing the number of turnovers that we need to force in order to be a top defense. So there's a lot of things we're really looking to improve on defensively. And, and hey, our guys are pushing each day out there. They're trying to get better, and they push each other. Not really. I mean, our our guys work hard defensively. I haven't been shocked at anything. I've been very pleased. It's, it's usually how you practice is how you carry over into games, and and uh, our kids, I mean, have practiced hard on both sides of the ball, and they've played hard. Kirby, how has Jake Marta responded to the Notre Dame games? Are you sticking with him this week? Um, Jake's done a good job. I mean, he's well. He continues to work really hard. We have punt periods. We measure his. You know, his height, his uh, distance, his hang, his um, direction kicking, how well he's doing that. And uh, he continues to work on that. He gets lots of shots at it, and as well as the other guys. We've rolled other guys in there with the ones, and we'll see how it goes Saturday to see who punts. Did you get to see uh, this weekend with y'all off Ohio State or Washington? Have you been able to? See what your former quarterbacks are doing at those places. I watched the uh, SEC games. I saw highlights of uh, both those games, but I didn't. I, I watched uh, mostly the SEC games, which most of those were uh, at night, and got to see those. But I saw highlights of the others. Both guys are doing pretty well. I'm just wondering your, your thoughts on them. I'll be honest with you, I hadn't seen them much. You know, my focus is on Tennessee right now, and that's I'm grinding on Tennessee. Is there much difference in the Tennessee quarterbacks? in terms of how you would defend them? 
Yeah, there's, there's subtle differences. I mean, one's played a lot of ball and one hasn't played as much ball. And when you start looking at those two combinations, a lot of things. I mean, they may have Juwan Jennings at quarterback, so maybe a lot of a lot of guys at quarterback. I'm curious with the bill past California, you know, how that will – your thoughts on the impact that will have on college? Yeah, I defer to the SEC on that. You know, our commissioner does a good job leading us in the right direction, and I know we've got uh, – our president's done a great job of being on the committee um, to name, image, and likeness, and uh, he does a great job. And they'll be looking um, at all the different angles of it and see how it impacts college football. Uh, you said a bunch of times you got to come ready to play in the SEC every week, and you really seem to be high on Tennessee's talent level, especially their young talent. I just want to see if you know. I don't. I mean, you haven't been a part of a lot of these teams that have started off kind of as slowly as they have, and gotten, gotten off to the rough start. But does it make a team dangerous when they're kind of backs against the wall a little bit, really almost desperate for something good to happen for them like that? Does that make them maybe a little bit more dangerous? I think every team's dangerous. I mean, when I watch college football every Saturday, every team is dangerous. You're dealing with 18 to 22-year-olds whose mind is not where your mind is. My mind is there 98% of the time, okay? Their mind's there probably 5 to 10% of the time. Every team is dangerous, starting with Tennessee. Trey Hill he to strain a little longer uh, on the field in terms I want everybody to. Yeah. I want to strain harder and longer. I want Jordan Davis to strain harder and longer. I want Trey Hill to. Okay, it means when you strain on a play and you block a guy, I want you to do it longer and harder. So if you do it for four seconds, I want you to do it for five or six. If you do it for seven, I want you to do it for eight or nine. I want you to do it until the echo of the whistle. And that's harder and longer. And that's for every player on the team, not just Trey Hill. It's for every guy. Jake Fromm, I want him to strain harder and longer to make it perfect. You talked about with Trey Wayne's, I guess, first got a chance to play center in a game about his snaps being a little high. Obviously, uh, he seems to have uh, a lot of chances. He still has high ones. He has thousands of snaps out there. I don't think you can be a thousand for a thousand. So he has to continue to improve on his snaps and the pace of his snaps. But he's done a good job so far. And to go in the environment he went into at Kentucky, I thought it was an incredible job. Um, but he continues to grow and get better. And um, he's a guy that he'll tell you he he needs fire and motivation under him because it's come easy for him. He's very talented. He's athletic. But his his brother will tell you, his, his, both his brothers will tell you, his dad will tell you, he needs a fire lit under him to motivate him sometimes because he's athletic. Cade Mays in his sort of recruitment process, was there any, what were you sort of telling him and sort of pitching him on coming to Georgia given the ties that he had to Tennessee both when he was a committed prospect and when he reopened his sort of recruitment? Just opportunity. I mean, he's a super talented guy that plays the game the right way with toughness and passion, and he – he had an opportunity. I mean, we were we were low on linemen, and he knew he could come in and help us. And uh, Coach Pittman had a great relationship with him, and he chose to come. So, I mean, the sell was the education at Georgia and the opportunity to play early. How close do you, how close do you think Rochester is to? Yeah, I mean, I've seen him out there working on. It. He said he was clear, and he's just working his way back. Where's his progress? He's clear, and he's back I mean he's out there competing I don't I don't know what it is you guys have got on this whole Julian Rochester kick Julian is progressing to get better he had an ACL injury which happened a little later than most of our ACLs and he's continuing to work I don't I mean I really don't know how to answer the question because I feel like y'all keep asking about him like y'all are expecting him to run out there and start and play and when he's ready to play and he's like better than the guys that he's going against or the guys that he's that are he's behind then he'll play I'm not sure exactly when it happened. It was a weird deal. It was the SEC championship, and he didn't really know it, or it was the Sugar Bowl. I'm not – technically, I don't know. I just remember when the surgery occurred. Speaking of defensive line, it, it appears that a lot of people were pointing at that as a possible weak spot for Georgia this year. It seems like they've played really well. But what's been your assessment? You know, I don't – I think we've got a committee, and I've said that. We've got a bunch of guys that play really hard. We have no one dominant player. A lot of uh, our success in the defensive line has come from creative things on the edges, uh, different looks, uh, multiple things, more pressures. It's not just them. But a lot of the negative criticism that came 
wasn't fair to them because they were put in a tough situation. No defensive line just rolls out there and rushes three guys and four guys and dominates. I mean, it's just not going to happen day in and day out in our league. So to help them out, you got to get some single blocks. You got to get, you know, more people coming. You got to cause havoc. And that has helped them to have the freedom to make some more plays. But um, we'll continue to evaluate those guys. They work really hard. I mean, and we got we got a group of guys that are like they work hard, and there's a group of them. They all share the reps. They share the load. So you know, sure, we 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 want our guys to be more productive and create more negative loss yardage plays. But I'm very pleased with how hard they play and the understanding they play within our scheme. And when you say defensive line, you got to make sure you know. Are you saying the interiors? Or are you talking about everybody that puts their hand in the dirt up there? Because there's other guys that put their hand in the dirt. The outside backer guys. How do you feel the, the chess game? That's the analogy. But the chess game change when there is the familiarity. I know you said it comes down to the blocking and the tackling and all that, but when you know what they know, what you know, I mean, how, how deep does that really go in the thinking? I think you got to be careful. I mean, with the unique deal in the SEC where there's a large tree that comes from one coach, there's just a lot of guys, whether you're playing McIlwain, you're playing, you know, Muschamp, you're playing um, Derek Dooley <laughs> and Missouri. you got to be careful that you're not chasing ghosts. And uh, I learned that you know, early on that you can go out there and overthink all this and get into all that, and you, then you're out thinking yourself. At the end of the day, what can I do to get my guys to play at a high level and efficiently? Efficiently is no bus, because that's what you're trying to avoid is mistakes, and that's what we're trying to do, not overcomplicate things. Speaking of no bus, how do you think Lake has done this year, especially with the stuff that you wanted him to do, taking the right angles? He's getting better. I mean, he continues to work hard at it. Um, I'm on him every day to understand the ins and outs of our defenses, to be the commanding leader of his side, because it's not as easy as JR makes the call. A lot of times they're working two independent sides, and uh, he continues to, to work on that and improve on it. So I'm, I'm very pleased that he's coming in extra, meeting, learning his stuff. But it's always a work in progress back there because we challenge him mentally. Yeah, they, they have the best understanding of our defense, Tay and Monty do. But the other guys are um, probably just as talented in some cases, if not more. But they're still learning the ins and outs of it, and uh, they do a good job. We've got, you know, four to five guys that we feel comfortable playing at inside backer, and we've got a, a good depth um, issue to have. The issue is a couple of those guys. I mean, Tay's going to be gone next year, so we're going to be looking to replace him. Yeah, he wasn't able to go today. Um, he was, he's running. He's, he's running faster. He's picking up speed, but he's not, uh, he's not able to go right now. Kinley? Yeah, Sullivan will go a good bit. We think, um, we think he's going to be okay. I mean, uh, it's going to be a matter of whether he's mentally ready to play more than physically ready to play. He's in a similar situation that Isaiah Wilson was in uh, the week in Notre Dame. Um, not right now. I mean, we, we, we feel good that Justin Schaefer's playing good football. Cade will alternate with some backup stuff because Cade kind of backs up a lot of positions. But um, you know, we've got other guys that can play left guard. You talked after the game about George Pickens getting the ball more downfield. Where is he at in his evolution as far as he's been working on the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I'm not really saying just down the field. I'm saying the ball in general because he, he, he does a good job with his whole route tree. He's um, He's got – really good quickness and explosiveness. He's shown up really good on our GPS system. Um, we're trying to find ways to uh, get him the ball and get him touches, and he continues to develop and grow. So we're, we're trying to find ways to get a lot of guys the ball more, and uh, he's one of those. With, with that in mind, one of the things that the metrics show is pace of play. Getting more guys the ball, that doesn't necessarily translate. I mean, wouldn't that translate to playing more plays? And what are your thoughts on tempo? And Yeah, we go tempo. I mean, we've gone tempo in every game, so I mean, we don't we don't mind tempo. We practice tempo. Tempo is part of our offense, and we're certainly capable of doing it. Two more questions. Coach, I think you've talked about Jennings. What, what about Callaway, Palmer, the challenge those guys present to you guys uh, in the passing game? 
<coughs> both those guys are very experienced. It seems like they've been there forever. Um, know a lot about them and, and all their wideouts. They got size. Uh, they've got a lot of catch radius. Um, they're both explosive players. You know, Callaway does a great job with punt returns, and um, they're fast guys, and they're they're really tough matchups size wise um, out on the perimeter, and they both are really physical blockers. I was just wondering, there's been some worry about Roquan Smith. Have you heard from him at all or know anything about what might be going on with him? I haven't uh, talked to Roquan. I haven't talked to Roquan, but our thoughts are with him.